Greetings ladies and gentlemen, how the devil are we all doing? It's a nimble gymnast and in this video we're taking a look at what I consider to be at least the easiest and fastest way to level up in Fallout 76. Now then, straight off the bat I'm going to tell you where I go to cheese some really easy XP. And this requires literally no legwork whatsoever. You can literally go to this location, use this technique and get a nice stable amount of XP. Although you can improve on it significantly, but that does require a little bit more work, but we'll get on to that later. Anyway, yeah, we're telling you at location, wouldn't I? This, ladies and gentlemen, is the glorious establishment called West Tech. And I'm guessing quite a lot of you watching this video know where I'm going to be going with this, but for those who don't, prepare to have your eyes open to a whole new world. Now then, Mon Petit Fleurs, as you can see, there's an absolute shit ton of super mutants in here, and they provide something very useful called XP. And the way we extract this resource from said super mutant is by committing genocide. Every single one of them must be eliminated. Now, you can get this done in a matter of minutes, you know, it doesn't take long to run through here. And when you have cleared out the area, you have a decent amount of XP and a load of weapons that you can go and scrap for materials. But trust me guys, we can do so much more with this place. What if I was to tell you that we could respawn these super mutants in literally a matter of seconds and repeat the process over and over and over again? That'd be nice, that, wouldn't it? Well, it just so happens you can do exactly that. And there's a couple of ways of doing it. You can either fast travel out of West Tech, give it a couple of minutes, and then go back inside, and all the super mutants should be respawned. Or the second option, which I consider to be a hell of a lot faster, is to find this elevator here. You should come across it naturally whilst clearing out the building. When you find said elevator, you're gonna go inside it, and you're gonna go down to the research facility. Simply, simply lovely. Now then, when you do get down here, you're gonna be faced with more super mutants, and what what do you reckon you gotta do with these guys? Yep, that's right, you at the back, we're gonna eliminate these as well. Right then, now you've taken out these ginormous green bastards, you're gonna make your way through the research facility. And it's only a small area, won't take you any time at all. And you'll probably only encounter another one or two at most super mutants, just get rid of them guys as well. We're gonna make our way back towards the elevator. And in some cases, you may actually see some super mutants down here have respawned as well. That's absolutely fine. Just get rid of them, get into the elevator and go back up to the main level. And lo and behold, look at that, you see, every single super mutant in the building should have respawned. Absolutely bloody fantastic, that, isn't it? And you can literally repeat this process as much as you want. Run around the building, kill all the mutants, go in the elevator, come back up, repeat the process. Simply, simply lovely. Now then, at this part of the video, you could close YouTube, log into 76 and go and try this yourself, but just stand on to them reins, Tonto. While we are generating a decent and reliable amount of XP here, we could make it so much better. Now, this is going to require a little bit of work from yourselves. Nothing too strenuous, so don't worry. And when you do get it all up and running, it's got to be what I consider the fastest and most important way, the most legit way of getting your levels up, in my opinion at least anyway. So, to to maximise the XP we get from this place, we're going to focus on two key things, intelligence and XP buffs. The higher intelligence you have, the more XP you get, and obviously the more XP buffs you have, the more XP you get. Pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? We're going to start off by getting our intelligence up, and the easiest way to start off with this is by whacking 15 points into intelligence. Nice and simple. Just max that bastard out, that's it, yeah, get all the points in there. And of course, guys, make sure you max out your legendary intelligence perk as well. I will say, though, a little word of warning, sometimes when you equip this legendary perk card, it doesn't show up in your special, but as you can see here, it is making a difference. I don't know what to say about that other than the fact it's Fallout 76. But anyway, I digress guys. After pissing around with all our perk points, we've got a base level of 24 intelligence. Now mine is a little higher due to my mutations, Egghead being the main one that's affected it, but we'll get onto that later in video, don't you worry. So at this point, we need to work out what armor we're going to use, and some of you aren't going to like this, but we're going to have to use unyielding. It's by far the best for boosting up your intelligence. However, we are going to have to be a bloody bill for this. I know some of you really do not like running this at all, but you know, just try to keep an open mind. You may even come to love it. Anyway, if you cast your eyes down to my elf bar in the bottom corner, you'll see that I'm quite heavily irradiated, and at this moment, we do still have a base intelligence of 24. But this is all going to change when we equip our unyielding armor. Now, I've not got anything special. It's a really basic set that I've got, but just look what happens to our intelligence 
since when I put it on. It's gone from 24 up to 39. Absolutely fantastic. And like I said, guys, this is just a basic set. If you get one with plus one intelligence on all the pieces, then yeah, it's going to bunk it up even more, isn't it? We can also equip this little bugger as well. The shielded flannel shirt and jeans. It's an under armor, which gives us another three points in intelligence, which bunks up our overall intelligence points to 42. Very, very nice indeed. Another cheeky little thing we can do is equip the night person perk card. At level three, it'll give you free intelligence and free perception between the hours of 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. Now, yes, this isn't going to give you any advantage during the day, but in the daylight hours, you can swap it out for another card. And of course, with this equipped, our intelligence has gone up to 45. Simply, simply lovely. Now we can move on to our mutations. And the one that I mentioned before, Egghead, is probably the best for intelligence. It gives you plus six points right off the bat. However, it does give you minus three strength and minus three endurance. Oh dear, what are we going to do? Well, we're just going to equip this lovely little card here, Class Freak. Now, this reduces the negative effects of all your mutations. And at rank three, it's going to knock them down by 75%. And as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, with that card equipped, that minus three strength and minus three endurance has turned into minus one strength and minus one endurance. Beautiful. Now then, guys, there is a couple more useful mutations that you can get. One of these being herbivore or carnivore. And it's pretty self-explanatory. If you like to eat plants, then, you know, get herbivore. Or if you like to eat meat mm -hmm, that's what she said then get carnivore these are going to give you a bonus to plant or meat based foods that you eat and trust me you're going to see the benefits of this later on in video anyhow the last mutation we're going to pick up is herd mentality and this gives you a bonus to intelligence when you're part of a group and the best part of it is if you don't want to be in a team with people you know you're a bit of a law wanderer then you don't have to be you can literally create a team on your own and it'll still kick in absolutely fantastic so if we go into world map here and we choose to create a new team we're going to go for casual because we also get an extra bonus part of intelligence you'll see herd mentality has indeed kicked in so we get another two points to intelligence absolutely beautiful and we're now up to 49 on our intelligence special points that's not too bad of an increase that is it very very nice indeed but of course, guys, we can do better than that. And this is where food and chems come into play. If we're an herbivore, we can eat either brain bombs or brain fungus soup. Now, as a baseline, the brain fungus soup will give us two intelligence and the brain bombs will give us three. Not too bad. But what's this? When we take a look at our brain fungus soup on our main character, it's giving us four intelligence. And that's because our herbivore's kicking in. It's literally doubling the positive effects of plant-based foods. And the same can be done for carnivore as well. On the chems front, the best thing we could use is berry mentats. That's a straight up five intelligence for five minutes. But again, this is something we can improve. If we equip the chem fiend card at max rank, it'll last for 10 minutes. And in my opinion, that's not a bad improvement. At this point, guys, the only other thing that I can think of that improves your intelligence is the intelligence bobblehead. Unfortunately, I just don't bloody have one. Bobbleheads all have static spawn points, but it's never guaranteed what bobblehead you're going to get. Same with magazines. And to be honest with you, I've already had an aneurysm trying to get all the footage for this video. I don't want to, you know, put myself in an early grave looking for one. Now, just before we move on to the next part of our Levelly Boy 12,000, I've actually just remembered another place you can get a couple of points of intelligence from, and it's from this this beautiful bastard here the mechanical derby game now i think i could be wrong it was a reward from last season but i'm not too sure on that but yeah all you gotta do is interact with it and it's an instant two points of intelligence absolutely belting they're making it too easy for us at this point we've now got all our intelligence points sorted out and i'm not going to show you what it is just yet we'll do a reveal at the end it's a rather healthy increase i'm not going to lie to you so from here on out we're going to be focusing on xp buffs and the first most obvious one is to pop four lunch boxes. Now, yes, you can buy these for real money, but you can actually, you know, unlock them on the scoreboard. So yes, they're not the best thing in terms of getting all of them, unless you want to drain your bank account, but they do give the best XP boost by far. Like I said, pop four of these buggers and you'll get 100% XP boost and everybody around you will be thankful as well. Another simple way to get some much needed XP is by sleeping in a bed. If you stay in it long enough till the little yawning vault boy symbol pops up, you'll get the well rested bonus. Or the kindred spirit one if you're shagging your companion. Either one of these will give you a nice little 5% XP boost. Simply, simply lovely. Now, believe it or not, there is quite a few foods that can help you with that leveling up. You can get the canned meat stew, which is a reward from the Feed the People event. This will give you an extra 5% levelly, boys. Absolutely brilliant. 
On top of this, we also have Cranberry Cobbler and Cranberry Relish. These buggers, again, will give you a nice XP boost. It's not a magnificent amount, but every little helps. Now then, on to perk cards. There's only really one which is going to give you any more XP, and that's the Inspirational perk card. And at rank 3, this bad boy is going to give you an extra 15% more XP when you're part of a team. Which, of course, is something we went through before. You know, if you've just clicked to this point of the video to avoid me talking. Trust me, I completely understand why you'd do that. And other than that, guys, the only other things you can get for XP is the Leadership Bobblehead. Again, I don't bloody have it. And I do believe Live and Love 8 gives you an XP bonus as well. Anyhow, let's head on over back to West Tech, wait till night time and see what our intelligence is at and what kind of XP we're getting off those Super Mutants. Right then, guys, as you can see, we're back at West Tech and our intelligence is sitting at 63. Now, considering what we started with, that is an absolutely massive body improvement. We've eaten all of our buffs, so we're just going to pop four lunch boxes, go inside and see what kind of XP we're getting from these super mutants now. And look at that, you see, a massive improvement over what we were getting originally. Some of these level 100 super mutants were getting 1500 XP per kill. Whereas before, I think it was around 500. I don't know, I'll have to go back and have a look through footage. But yeah, an absolutely unbelievable increase. Now, yes, that does look like a lot of work what I did there, but trust me, it's really not. In essence, it's just a buddy build making use of food buffs and mutations. Nothing too complicated at all. And like I mentioned before, guys, there's some items I've not got here, so this can be improved on even further. And I must say, it's absolutely beautiful when you use this on a double XP weekend. Now then, like I said at the start of the video, you don't even have to make an intelligence build or do all the buffs or anything that I showed you. You can literally run into West Tech, do the little respawn loop thing. You have a nice steady supply of XP, you have steel coming out your arsehole from all the weapons that you've scrapped, and it'll help you to get them points on the scoreboard as well. Anyway guys, that is it from me. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I don't claim to be an expert, and I do know that there's other ways of leveling up faster. I mean, I'm not sure how many of them are still in the game, like the Scorch Pit, for example, but anyway, I digress. Personally, I think this is the most easily accessible and the most legit one that you can do yeah we'll go with that but i'll let you lot be the judge of that let me know what you think down in comments as ever I'd like to say a massive thank you to all my patreons the extra support is much appreciated if that's something any of you guys are interested in the link's down in the description you also find a link to all my socials down there as well anyhow as we say north i'll love you and leave you and i'll catch you at next one